Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. Today we go out on our EcoDriver loop with the Volkswagen ID3 Script Pro. This car has a 150 kilowatt motor. The traction battery has a capacity of 62 kilowatt hours gross, 58 net. The WLTP consumption is given with 15.4 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers. But as usual, this includes charging losses and uh, therefore we have to deduct some of it. So I guess it will be around 14. The unladen weight is 1,900 kilograms, 4,180 pounds. And for today's trip, I have set the AC on 18 degrees Celsius, 64 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll show you the loop that we are doing in case you're new to this channel. We are starting here at the edge of town where the green arrow is on the map and after about one and a half kilometers we hit the ascent about six kilometers uphill followed by some uh, rolling hills also six kilometers four miles and six kilometers downhill and at the end of the downhill we already get a good indication of where we will end up with the consumption what follows is 19 kilometers off open road through some villages, that's uh, 12 miles, uh, 17 kilometers, 11 miles of motorway and 17 kilometers, 11 miles of city traffic. At the end of every section, I will show you the sectoral and overall consumption. And at the end, we have a short analysis. Don't forget, there will be a second video with this car where I looked at the consumption on mountainous roads and the ability to recuperate. I'll put the link in the description box below and at the end of this video. The cameras will be on all the time. Don't worry, this video won't be two hours long. And uh, this is to show that there is no need to go slow if you want to drive efficiently or economically. You can drive with the normal traffic, but still save a lot of fuel or electricity in this case. Uh, by just knowing how to do it. If you follow some rules, then it's an easy thing to drive efficiently. Today we have wonderful weather. I hope you enjoy this, uh, you enjoy the route, and I'll talk to you later. We're coming to the end of the uphill section and when we go around the corner we see 36.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. What this car has and others as well is kind of an adaptive regeneration once you lift your foot off the accelerator. Uh, that means if you lift your foot off the accelerator, the car is coasting, but when uh, the car realizes there is an obstacle or a speed limit or a roundabout or whatever, it increases region and therefore brakes by itself. And with this car, there is no chance to switch it off uh, compared, to the, compared to the Audi Q4 e-tron, uh, where you can switch it off. Uh, it, this is, don't get me wrong, this is a helpful feature for safety, but when it comes to efficiency, a good driver is still more efficient. You will see it later, there is a, there is a roundabout and those systems always reduce the speed of the car before the roundabout, if there, but there is no need because we leave the roundabout at the first exit and we could go through it with almost full speed. But the computer obviously think we have to reduce the speed because we we do the full circle or, or we, we leave at the third exit or whatever. However, what this car has is an overall function. If the car is braking automatically, if you step on the accelerator, then 
it doesn't break anymore. But this is only for this very occasion. So the next time you do this, it's back to the normal setting. At the end of the hilly section we have 25.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. The 150 kilowatts of this motor should provide sufficient power in regen mode so the electric motor is doing the braking work and in this process is producing energy. So the kinetic energy stored in the car is reverted back to electric energy. However with weak electric motors you have to keep in mind that the amount of electricity that can be produced is restricted. Here with 150 kilowatts it should be okay on most occasions but you always should keep this in mind uh, and avoid uh, too harsh braking especially from higher speeds where the car has uh, low torque and uh, therefore low power output and it then might well happen that you use the friction brakes to reduce the speed and then you cannot make use of the full regenerative capacity of the kinetic energy you have stored. At the end of the descent, we have 11.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Well, that doesn't look too bad. You've seen other cars in front of us. They were, they were driving rather slowly, but you could tell they were not driving efficiently. And as I said at the beginning of the video, you, you don't need to drive slow to be efficient. And now we're coming to the open road and we have some we go through some villages and small towns and this is a typical non-highway or non-motorway road for this part of the world At the end of the open road section we have 11.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yeah, that looks very good. On the motorway we have a restriction to 100 kilometers an hour compared to the normal 130 in Austria. There is a, a law 
which allows the local governments to reduce the speed for all cars except electric vehicles. So with our vehicle, we would be allowed to go 130 on this motorway, but firstly, for efficiency reasons, and secondly, for comparison reasons, we stick to the 100 kilometers an hour. And normally on this section of the road, there is such heavy traffic that it doesn't make sense to even try to go faster as all the other traffic is going around 100 kilometers an hour and it's a two lane road, so we can't overtake anyway. At the end of the motorway, 12.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We are now coming to the city section and here it's important to look ahead, read the roads, anticipate what other road users are doing and try to keep the vehicle in motion. As the relatively most energy, relative in terms of consumption per distance covered, is used when you accelerate from zero and we should try to avoid this and therefore look ahead and keep the vehicle in motion. You see here, we are coming around the corner and the traffic lights in front of us are red. So I don't accelerate harshly, uh, just move slowly towards the end of the queue. There are no other cars behind me that I'm blocking. And you see, it's turning green and we avoided a full stop and saved some energy. Coming to the end of the trip on the Eco Driver Loop with the Volkswagen ID3 under these wonderful circumstances. Look at this weather, isn't that gorgeous? Well, we go here into this parking lot and we see 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And now the analysis. 
Well, now let's summarize the trip with the Volkswagen ID3. Uh, you see here the summary of the overall and sectoral consumption with the overall consumption of 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Here we have the table uh, of all the EVs I have tested so far. You see those many blank lines. Uh, those are the cars I've already tested and the videos are on my German channel and slowly those videos get uh, translated to English and will then put here on the EcoDriver channel. I have the results in order of the weight specific consumption. That's the column on the far right. Uh, weight specific consumption, what is this? That's the consumption in kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers per 100 kilograms of weight. Why? Because due to the efficiency of electric motors or electric cars, uh, every external factor is playing a much bigger role than with ICE cars. And one of those external factors is the weight. So therefore, I decided to use here the weight as the as the factor for the specific consumption, which because I think it's the, the biggest influence in the way we are driving here. Uh, it might be different in Germany, where you have uh, where you are allowed to go much higher speeds on the motorway, and aerodynamics play a bigger role. But in most parts of the world, we have uh, uh, restrictions of maximum 120, 30, or in one case 140 kilometers an hour um, which is seven maybe 70 75 miles an hour Volkswagen ID3 with the 58 kilowatt battery you see the conditions were perfect uh, sunny on average 22 degrees Celsius we see 0 0.637 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers per 100 kilograms of weight which is the fourth best result I've had so far of all my tested cars. There are two other ones that are not yet on the EcoDriver channel, but they will come within the next couple of weeks. This is, I think, a very good result. Volkswagen drivetrain is very efficient. I think it's only it's second to the uh, Hyundai Kia, although with the caveat that I haven't tested a Tesla yet. So we will see where, the, where we are with the Tesla. Uh, once I have the chance to test it, uh, I hope it will be soon. But at the end, it's not the car that gives you the result, it's the driver. And if you suffer from range anxiety, I think this can be healed with this car because with the 58 kilowatt hour battery and the consumption of 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, uh, you easily get 450 kilometers or 280 miles. And even with motorway speed of, yes, it's only 100 kilometers an hour, but still you get 400 kilometers or 250 miles. And uh, you can get this car with an even bigger battery as well. If you want to see more of the ID3, then uh, you can check out the mountain consumption and regeneration test. And if you are generally interested in what I'm doing, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any new video. That's been it for the ID3. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.